All right, everybody, stand up, make some noise. Give it up for Miss Libby Tanner. Give it up for Libby, everybody. Oh my God! Hello. Is that on? Do I have Is to yell? On? Hello. Let's get Libby's mic, my, Libby's mic up a little bit on this side. <laughs> Is everybody awake? <laughs> Did anybody get any sleep last night? I don't know. Good. How much concealer did you girls put on? I'm like, I can't put any more on. <laughs> Well, you look great. You sound great. We're going to get right to the Q&A. we got a lot of people lined up to ask questions. We're going to start on the right and go back and forth. What's your name and where are you from? Hi, Libby. Um, I'm Danielle Lynn from New York. Um, I actually met you on video chat. Um, first off, I just wanted to thank where you Where are so you? Much. I can't see. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. Hello, love. Um, Danielle. Yes. Yes, we actually met on video chat. Uh, I just wanted to thank you first off for coming and um, we all appreciate it so much. Uh, my question is, what scene specifically that you remember was very like emotionally tolling and like kind of you brought it home with you and you were like, wow, this was hard to film and make believable? Um, well, I, just watching that tit bit of it then, I was thinking, God, to be 42 again, honestly. <laughs> We look fantastic back then. <laughs> no, we, 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 we're looking brilliant now. Somebody did say to me, one of you girls did say to me, it's, uh, it's the bottle of wine, you know, you put it down and it ages beautifully. And I went, oh, <laughs> oh can you drink it as you go along? <laughs> um, the, the scene with, that was most taxing, I think, um, and I've expressed this one before, is uh, the scene uh, with um, Nicole and they realised that they, they have to let each other go. Oh. And they'd worked so hard to, um, you know, to keep, their, to keep it, their love <coughs> together and to support one another in there. And it was just so, so clear to Bridget on that day where she just said, you're not going to let me go. And she said, yeah. And it was really hard because they had to... I remember thinking and telling the director, Fiona, <clears throat> oh my God, can you shoot me first? And I'd never done this as an actor and pushed it out there, you know, can you shoot me first? But I really thought, I'm going to lose it if you don't turn it around now because it was a lot of thinking about that scene and a lot of pent-up energy and, and um, I'm glad they shot me first. <laughs> I was like, oh God, I'm going to peak. <laughs> it was really emotional. and. Um, Great question, thanks a lot. Thank We're gonna you. go over here to this side, the top dog on the left, go ahead. Hi, I'm Lisa from Lexington, Kentucky, and I was just wanting to know if you did any kind of research on prison psychology or anything to take on this role, or? No, I didn't. I, I haven't researched any role that I've ever played. <laughs> <laughs> I leave that up to the writers. <laughs> I trust the writers and, um, and trust the script too, I think uh, there's a real rhythm with the script and when you have it sitting in front of you, you read it over and over again and it, and it just, uh, from our experience and our perception of the world thus far, it just kind of falls out and so I think everybody has, you know, a great big heart that can be broken and can be stressed and can be, and can be challenged and I just bring that to every Part, but especially Bridget because she was so lovely to play that she could be there and and facilitate all the the realness of, of these women who were just surviving in there and who had all these masks on and they were in prison you know not really being themselves until they got to her room and when they got to Bridget's office I got to meet the real women you know cool awesome and I thought that was fabulously written and yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, thank you for being here. Today's my girl's birthday. If you could wish her happy birthday, it'd be oh. great. 
Happy birthday. What's your girl's name? Her name is Lane. Hey, happy birthday, Lainey. There you are. How old are you today? Can I ask? 22. Oh, yeah, little thing. <laughs> little baby. 22, so am I. <laughs> All right, on this side, go ahead. And happy birthday, Lane. Go ahead. Hi, uh, my name's Holly, and I'm from Indiana. And I do have a question, um, just one. Um, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but what was it like being in a relationship with Frankie on set? <laughs> <laughs> Have we met Nick yet? Have you seen Nick yet? Nope. <laughs> We're saving her for last. We're, we're making them earn it. <laughs> so nice to see Nick again, because we haven't seen each other for some time. <laughs> and um, to be reunited today is, is absolutely wonderful. Fabulous working with uh, De Silva and I think Frankie and Bridget um, had the X factor, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> And that's kind of something that you, you don't really, uh, can't really express or understand until you're on set and that it happens within the scene. And we trusted one another enough to just turn up and let the, let the dialogue sort of fall out and see where the scene would take us. And we did have that X factor. We had that chemistry and we watched it back and thought, these two really look like they're in love and, they're, and that they're having a a really kind of reliable, beautiful relationship. And it worked, and, and it's interesting to me because, you know, sometimes you get to work with people that you know really well, and I've never met Nicole before. And some people that I knew terribly well, who I thought, oh, this is just gonna look lovely on screen because we've got that um, friendship there already, it was just would bomb, you know? Isn't that interesting? And then, but for us, no idea who she was. And there you go. And the producers went, I was only supposed to be there for four episodes. <laughs> <laughs> so four uh, seasons later, thanks to that chemistry. So it's a great question. Um, Bridget lived on and became Bridget. So yeah. there we are. So. <laughs> yeah. I can recognise so many faces here. It's just amazing. Oh, my goodness. It's like seeing all your besties at once. <laughs> all my Zoom calls. And, oh, my God, I can see you all and just think it's amazing to be here. So... Oh, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> I love this energy and I love walking around Chicago yesterday. And I thought, right, Lib, what I've got to do is just walk around and, and tie yourself out so you get a good night's sleep. Because you know how the, the plane trip, we're travelling for two days, everything was delayed. And so I walked, 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 and it's Chicago. Who's from Chicago? <laughs> okay, what a beautiful city. What a big, beautiful, bold city. And I was so impressed, and it's so clean. <laughs> and, and so pretty. Really, really lovely. I was so impressed. I love that big bean. <laughs> <laughs> I stood there going, hey, there you go, tourist. <laughs> Can't help it. Once you're there, I need the photo with the bean. Get amongst it. Yeah. Uh, next question over here on the left. Holy crap. Um, <laughs> I'm oh, shaking. So there you are. I oh. know you. <laughs> oh, I know you. Yeah, I brought your art. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh, it's... I can't... It's it, it is you! Oh, my <laughs> God, how are you? <laughs> okay, I'm shaking, oh my God. so... Um, well, I forgot your name, quick. Oh, Cassandra. Cassandra, that's it, that's it. You know I'm okay. terrible with names. There you are, but I can see your dreadies from here. <laughs> You're a very good artist. As soon as she moved out of her, her parents, she got dreads and tattoos. <laughs> More studs up the nose and all that. She, she's really coming into her own now, Cassandra. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> it, just, it just laughs about it all the way. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, the podcast that you did, yeah. how did that come about and will there be any more? 
well, they just, Fremantle called up and I said, yes, it was as easy as that. And, well, having to say it was easy, as that, that was the phone call, that was the initial contact. And, but, um, you know, being in there and doing that was a completely new experience for me. And I'd only been given two episodes of it, thinking, oh, this is not much to, you know, to work on, this is not much to do. And then the next day I get there and there was eight episodes to record and I'm like, woo, another life down by the seat of your pants. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep up the energy, whatever you do, you know. It was, it was fantastic, but I learned a lot from that. I heard it back and I thought, oh, you could pull that back there. That was a bit pushed or, you know, um, it's, it's such a weird way of storytelling, isn't it? You know, to just close your eyes and listen to it. But anyway, I, I think I can do better and I'd love to do another one. See you later. <laughs> okay, baby. <laughs> Next question over here on the right. Hi, I am Olivia. I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. Over here, hi. <laughs> it's, the, it's the masks. It's all right. It's, it's all right. City. <laughs> so basically, you helped me with my sexual awakening. Um, uh, and <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, so um, yesterday, I got, to to, I got to propose to my hot girl in a hot car, Kristen. <laughs> Oh, wow. Where's Kristen? Can I see Kristen as well? So we've got Kristen, and what's your name again, Lum? Olivia. Olivia and Kristen. Yes. And Kristen's here? And Kristen's here. Hi, Kristen, stand up. <laughs> Kristen. <laughs> was, it, was it a yes? It, it was a yes. Oh. It was a solid yes. I guess. <laughs> that would have been super just... awkward. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> What so do you think she'd still be if she said that? Maybe this was like the second try. <laughs> See how you feel tomorrow. I've got more. <laughs> right. So my question is, how do you feel being a staple in the LGBTQIA plus community? Well, I, I, I love the LGBTIQ plus <laughs> community. I usually have expressos to wake up and they've only got percolated back there, and I don't think it's quite done its job yet. <laughs> Might kick in. <laughs> I love it. But I look, a lot of my um, dear friends in Geelong and Melbourne, especially Sydney, I have a lot of, um, a lot of gay friends, and they're in the theatre. I did theatre for ten years before um, television. I never thought I'd be, you know, part of television because I was so entrenched in the theatre. And, um, and there's my family, yeah, it's just growing up with my friends and especially playing Zoe on Pacific Drive, which was my first show. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. That was, I didn't think I was going to get that one either. They said, she's, she's interesting. Yeah, perhaps, you know, like after four auditions with a fake tan up in Queensland, you know, perhaps give her the lesbian role and maybe she can just do that. And that's how it was like it was palmed off to me. But... I was ecstatic for this role. I was like, what am, uh, you know, she's got squinty eyes. She's got a bit of a long nose. Just give her the lesbian part. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about my European, you know, family, what they think about that. My Spanish grandpa was very squinty and full, full littered. Um, I didn't think anything different. I guess what I'm trying to say is when I got there, it was all these reporters saying to me, what's it like to kiss a girl? Oh, my God. You all right? And I went, well, what do you, what do you mean? Is something going to happen? Is something happening to me? <laughs> <laughs> do, I, do I turn purple or something? I don't know. <laughs> it's just the same as uh, kissing somebody you're in love with. It's just the same story. And I'm an actor. I read these lines. And I read it for love, you know. And so that was back then. So we have progressed. We've come to Wentworth. And it's 20 years later or 25 or something. Something like that. And nobody asks me that question anymore. So I think it's um, here we are today. And, and I'm so proud to be part and to stand up wherever I can and say, of course, love is love, you know. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And congratulations. We're going to go back to this side. Next question. Hi, uh, my name is Aloha. Um, a lot of times, you know, uh, TV shows have somebody in the production team, like Grace Anatomy has a physician, you know, giving advice. 
was there anybody in on Wentworth uh, giving advice in like the psychology realm? Like as a viewer, I loved your character, but as a psychologist myself, I cringe at every single ethical violation. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody was there. <laughs> you had to take the dramatic license, you know. And as I said, I would get the script, and it, as a person, I would, you know, I, I would feel it and perform it that way. But um, you mean ethically with with my relationship with Frankie? Or? Uh, yeah, mainly. <laughs> you um. know that old thing. <laughs> it's just a little bit, bit too much of a hurdle. Do you think it does happen? Surely. Uh, it must happen. People just fall in love with people. Is that what you're saying? Or is it like ethically? Well, yeah, I mean, that, that was an ethical violation, sleeping with, you know, <laughs> an inmate uh, client. Uh, I mean, I don't blame you from this perspective. <laughs> I'll probably lose my yeah, license for Frankie as well. She? Come on. But you can't help an energy. I mean, other than that, you did a beautiful job at portraying a therapist, so. <laughs> well, I. Uh, Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> if there was anybody consulting uh, with a, like a therapist for to help you with your role, so to no. be able to portray that, no, <laughs> nobody helped me. <laughs> I just bastardized it all by myself. <laughs> Thank you for the question. I, I don't think there are many TV shows with no ethical violations that make it to season nine. I don't, I don't think that happens. I don't right? think so, no. There's yeah. a lot of dramatic life. Right. I'm, I'm happy that there were so many ethical violations on this show, if you ask me. Uh, no, I really felt like I was dragged up to the principal's office then. I was in trouble. <laughs> I would have just made up a name, be like, yes, there was someone there responsible yeah, for that. Shouldn't. His name was James, and uh, we don't talk <laughs> about him. <laughs> Go ahead, next question over here. Yes, Cindy from Fort Worth, Texas. Hi, Cindy. And for fuck's Texas. sake, I fucking love you. Oh, man. Cindy! Oh, that. <laughs> oh, I love what. Oh, my God. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I love watching you do that. And fuck you, I love You, you will always be one of my Wentworth loves, and you and Frankie, I will call you Gidge. You will be Gidget forever I'm on not. there. My question is, is if you had any uh, work, if you were one of the writers, would you have written your script any different than the way that it ended? Oh. Than the way that it ended? Or it, would you have changed any of your character in a script if you were the writer? I guess I would have liked to have known a bit more of Bridget's background. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, I didn't... We, mm -hmm. Don't you think? Because we, they hinted at a, a couple of ideas what happened in her, in her 20s and um, perhaps a couple of loves in her past. But uh, it was a lot left up to imagination. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I mean, but, you know, again, Bridget was only supposed to be there for three... Um, episodes, four episodes. So they were kind of riding on the run with her, and um, I'm just glad I didn't get shivved. Oh, no, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just glad that we drove off into the sunset and we're still alive, and Nick and yes. I are going, Where's the spin off? For God's sake, it's, you know. It's going to... <laughs> yes! Come on! Hello! Where is the spinner? <laughs> well, I love you, Gidget. I yeah. love you, Gidge. Well, we, if we say it all together, one, two, three, spin off. You ready? One, two, three, spin off! <laughs> so thank you for that. That's a very. <laughs> Get your Gidge on! Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. We're going to go back to the left side of the room. Go ahead. Hi, my name's Nick. Um, I guess my question is really just, you said you were only supposed to be around for like four episodes. So when you went into the scene where you left Frankie in your office, did you know that you were going to be coming back? Or did you go into that scene thinking that that was it? That you weren't coming back to the show? Well, no, they write it as you're performing it. So they've, they've seen it 
they've aired it. Mm -hmm. right. And I think we had a good eight months in between shooting the next season and they've, they've got test audience and um, the feedback was so great that they just said, oh, let's try another episode, let's try another season. And then they really developed the relationship from there. But it was kind of all playtime up until then. It's like, oh, no, she's really invested now. <laughs> she's not going anywhere, you know. I'm, I'm glad. Gonna... I'm glad you didn't go anywhere. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Yeah. Thank you. Was... Mm. Thank you for the question. We're going to go back over here to the right. What's your name? Where are you from? Hey, it's Tina from Texas. Oh, it's <laughs> Tina! Where's Emily? Come on, She's Emily. She's over there. There she is! There she is! <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Emily gets on a plane from Australia. We do a Zoom call, and Tina's like, I've got a surprise for you. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what's it going to be? A lovely t shirt or a collage or a video? <laughs> and Emily just goes, <laughs> G'day. And I went, oh, shit. What are you doing there? What's going on? How was your road trip, Tina? It was great. Fantastic. It was great. Beth is here, too. <gasps> Beth. There she is. I can oh, hear you. <laughs> I knew I was not going to miss you today, young Beth. <laughs> Hello, darling. Hi. Hi. <laughs> That's so funny to see you all up close. I know, isn't it great? And we have Sarah in a little picture. She's in my seat. <laughs> Sarah. Sarah. Sarah, who did my birthday card. Yes. yes. Sarah, thank you very much. Yeah, she's in the seat as a picture because she's still see. in uh, Coffs Harbor. <laughs> oh, okay, she's not here tonight. She's not here. I was looking but for the She's here hand. in spirit, yes. Hi, we, Sarah. We've taken her everywhere Thanks for my birthday us. card. <laughs> Thanks for all your birthday wishes. Uh, <laughs> Well, my, my thing is, Libby, you know, we all remember the green table in Bridget's house. Um, <laughs> <laughs> was it green, was it? Oh, oh yes. yes. Oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> we all remember. Uh, so did you have any input in the decor of the home that was Bridget's <laughs> on set? <laughs> Is this a trick question? It is not. <laughs> it is not. I know you like eclectic colors. You know, that <laughs> kitchen was very eclectic, including the I green didn't, table. I didn't really see it. I just was smashed into a fridge. And, <laughs> <laughs> all right, there's the fridge. And then I was like thrown across there. And like, there's the table. <laughs> <laughs> now, where's that mm. bloody cat? <laughs> yes. Where was the cat? <laughs> <laughs> I love turning up that day and said, check out, join out. Nick, what do you think? She said, not bad, not bad. They put the music on and they really played the, mu played the music quite loud for us to do that dancing part. And oh, I love that. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. <laughs> had a lot of fun. We were only at, the, at that house for two days shooting. Really? Well, I was anyway. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of that, all the scenes done that are, you know, shot in Bridget and Frankie's house all in the one day. So depending on what characters, what storylines are happening, it's just the whole two days are in Bridget's house. So Kate Atkinson would be waiting at the, you know, at the front to just peek in through the window, <laughs> <laughs> having your coffee, going, hurry up. <laughs> it's a great house, yeah. Yeah, well, my, my question was, if you were to take something from Bridget's house and put into your own, what is it? And <laughs> they said Frankie. And, yeah, Frankie. <laughs> and and do you have a favorite thing at your own home that you use every day? For me, it's my step stool. <laughs> <laughs> my home that I use every day. Oh, it's, well, it's my bath. I have a bath every day. <laughs> <laughs> I do like a nice hot bath. <laughs> Especially when you can't get a massage when you feel like it, you know. I make it dreadfully hot though sometimes, and I think, am I going to pass out? But it just, it's just—it's <laughs> <laughs> have to have a very, very hot bath. So I'm very clean today. It's all right. <laughs> 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 Something I take from Frankie and Bridget's house. I had all the, all the, um, all the, the garden stuff they had, all the, the beautiful lights in the garden and the garden art. You probably didn't see it. 
but it... <laughs> <laughs> it was there. <laughs> I had two homes, that's right. When I, had, when I was on crutches, that was the second house. It was supposed to be the first house, but it was a much nicer one in the garden. I used to pinch the lemons and... Um, <laughs> And what else was growing out there? It's just sort of fill my bag up with frog cup. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of a forage around, you know. We're just sort of scratching around in the garden. That's what she really looked like. <laughs> just the garden, really, yeah. yeah. The lemon tree. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank Appreciate you. It. <laughs> it's a good thing you didn't steal yeah. that, though, because that would have been an ethical violation <laughs> if you had, if you had stolen again. that. Next question. I think we have two more on the left. Go ahead. Bethy. That's not Bethy. <laughs> um, hi, Libby. Uh, my name is Sam, and uh, I'm Sam. originally from Long Island, New York, uh, but I'm in. <laughs> woo, um, but I'm woo, in. But I'm in Chicago uh, for law school, and my girlfriend loves to tease me about the fact that I'm a law student. But my favorite show is about a women's prison. Um, I will, I'll never get over that one, never escape from it. Um, but I love the show so much. I love you so much. Oh, so that's why I'm here today. Life is full of polar opposites. <laughs> um, Law and Whitworth, I think they're perfect together, really. Go on. Get um, and um, my question originally was going to be about The Fall Girl, the audio uh, oh, yeah. audible podcast, because it was absolutely amazing. And I totally, I saw Bridget, you know, when um, when I heard your voice. So absolute congratulations that to you good, on that. That pretty emotional, that thing, didn't it? About yeah. the poor girl jumping off yeah. the board. Yes. So if you haven't listened to it yet, audio, the audio book, download Audible. It's totally worth it. <laughs> Um, so my yeah, question is... Take her wherever I go. She work for you? <laughs> yeah, she, <laughs> she does um, now. She's in law. She's already writing her own contract. <laughs> um, so my question now is, um, what do you think a day in the life for Frankie and Bridget looks like now? Now that Bridget's out of Wentworth, Frankie is out of Wentworth for good, what is just a typical normal day for her? Them. What do Frankie and Bridget um, do together now that, you know? <laughs> I think they did, they, they're really trying to think about having children by the now. Well, well, Frankie is anyway, so we're trying to work that out. Okay. I think they, um, <laughs> and yes, she's wearing the knickers. I've, I've given up that. <laughs> I said, you really want me to wear those knickers, you know? Nick, knickers is called Knickers, by the way. That is her nickname. Nicole. It's Knickers. <laughs> Can't you get the younger one to wear the knickers? Get knickers to wear knickers? I think they, they wake up. I think they make coffee, whoever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> whoever needs to, you know, a kick in the... Coffee. In the <laughs> Espresso coffee. And, um, and then they just loll about for a while. <laughs> Put the radio on. Are we talking a weekday or a weekend? <laughs> Whatever you want. Oh, they're still working, so they've had enough of that for the week. And, the, and you know, the sun's out. We're still in Australia. We only shoot when the sun's out. <laughs> Somebody said to me yesterday, is the sun, is it always sunny in Australia? And the driver said to me, is it, does it ever rain there? I went, it snows in Australia. <laughs> we really have this image that we are, we're, we're ready to uphold. I think they just have this lovely kind of uh, relationship. They'll have a few arguments, you know. That's okay. <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> what happens on the Sunday, girls? Tell me. With Frankie. What's that? Straight to the table, apparently. Straight back to the table. <laughs> On Sunday, any, any given day. Any given day. <laughs> they have a fabulous sex life. There you go. <laughs> and they like to dance, and they like to cook. <laughs> and they like to feed puss. That was a great answer. Thank you. How'd you go with that, Lyle? Thank you. <laughs> uh, our last question, I believe, is 
Beth, correct? Bethy. There she is. Oi, Lib! Oi, Beth! <laughs> um, I just wanted to say I revised my question because um, the character of Bridget did indeed seek corrective action by her board, and she did uh, do follow that. So it might be different in Australia. But I just wanted to ask you, I've told you on Beth is a psychologist. No, yeah. Beth is a clinical social worker. A clinical social worker. <laughs> but I'm a therapist. I'm a trauma therapist. <laughs> and um, the way you respectfully play that line, uh, that role of Bridget, and the way that you showed, even in your face, the, all the ethical dilemmas that you were going through, um, and the pain you were going through, because you realized you were in transference as that character. Mm -hmm. But what I wanted you to know, and what I'm wondering if you knew, I told you I have a big Australian client load now, and do you realize that because of that character, a lot of people in Australia seek trauma therapy now because those Wentworth women were tough and you were compassionate in that role and it's affected, you know, the whole LGBTQ young um, people. Isn't it fantastic? Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. And fantastic. We've good for you and good long... for the writers and yeah. spin off. Yeah, spin off. <laughs> I think that absolutely, Beth, and, and that's the thing that Wentworth, you know, showed is that everybody is a human being, you know, and okay that they're behind bars, they've done whatever the deed that they've done to get in there, but really what Bridget saw and was able to um, give to that show was that we got to see the person first, and that's how I played her. I wanted to see the person first because everybody can end up in a situation that can end you in, uh, in a prison sentence. And, and you know, from, from your background, some sort of conditioning of, um, and it's not really your fault, you're not a bad person. Even, even the murderers on um, Wentworth. Uh, <laughs> that Ferguson, <laughs> well. <laughs> we, we gave her a few, you know, wild cards and she, <laughs> It really was. <laughs> dear old pa dear Pam, is it she bloody fantastic? Oh my god, I loved working with her. Incredible, incredible woman. Real quick, we actually do have time for I think two more questions. So if you want to line up over there, you can go over there. Uh, we'll take and uh, okay, since you're over there, uh, I saw the back in the green right there first. So you guys head over there to that mic. Both of you guys, you'll be our last two questions for Libby. Thank you guys so much so far. All great questions. Um, whoever gets there first can ask. Go Robin, ahead. come on, Robin. I've got to do both of them. Hi, Libby. Hi, darling. Who have You're we got? so awesome. Oh, I show it here. Uh, um, of course, we all love Bridget, but if you could choose anyone else to have a sexual relationship <laughs> with, who would you pick? <laughs> Robin. <laughs> Why do people ask you that? We're dying uh, to know. Okay. Um, mm, 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 mm. Come on. I've been asked this before. I'd have to say, oh, I'd go for Miss Miles. Ooh! Dang! Okay. Jackie Brennan. <laughs> Bring it on, Jack. <laughs> She'll Good go, oh, choice. God, Libby, what'd you say that for? And I'll go, oh, I don't know, you just popped in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Libby. <laughs> Hello, darling. Robin, how are Hello. you today? I'm great. My oh. name is Robin Knight. And I'm from Dublin, Georgia. And I fucking love Libby Tanner. <laughs> <laughs> and Robin Knight is a comedian that I've worked out. On our Zoom calls, I did say to you, didn't I? I said, the last call, I said, I think you better write this down, Robin, because you need to be on stage. And she said, I am already on stage. I'm a comedian. And I went, I knew it. I knew that. I picked it. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Okay. As an actress, which type of scene is more difficult for you? Because you had both of them in Wentworth. Mm. The intense scenes where you have dialogue to express your emotion 
or the scenes where you have to do it with your facial features. Dialogue is harder. Well, you had a hot kitchen scene. <laughs> <laughs> the kitchen scene, we had a bit of dialogue and there was a lot of emotion. You didn't need a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think sometimes when, if something's overwritten, it's very hard to make it fall out of your mouth naturally. I always like to strip back the dialogue and just let the, the, the moment happen and let the, the, just work off the other person's, the other actor's expressions and the energy that they're giving you. And sometimes, you know, silence is just brilliant. And those moments are so far and few between in television when there's a lot of exposition and there's a lot of dialogue to get out to the audience to tell them. It. And I think you're over-telling the story sometimes. Just let the audience get it, you know. You know, they need to be respected a lot more, not so much in Wentworth, other the shows that I've done. And I think they'll, they'll understand this. Don't hammer them with this information. So always, you know, scaling back on the dialogue for me is my choice, yeah. Thank you. Who is that one other person who had a question over here? You can go up. We're going to do one Thanks. last question. <laughs> what, which one? <laughs> 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 Last question. What's your name? Where are you from? Hi, Libby. Uh, Is my it name Jody Spatiri? Nobody's <laughs> asked me to say Jody Spatiri this time. <laughs> yes. uh, my name is Jerica. I'm from Michigan. Hello, love. Hi. Uh, so, um, Bridget and Frankie were two of my favorite characters from Wentworth. And with their uh, storyline ending in season six, I almost felt kind of like grieving their loss from the show and felt a little sad to continue watching it. Uh, I was just kind of curious as an actor, how do you feel like once your storyline ends? Oh, I, there is a sense of grief for sure. You, you go home and, you know, you start making dinner again for the kids and start doing the school run and you just think, hang on, hang on, where's, where's my woman? Where's... <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you, there's another, you know, forensic psychologist comes on set and you go, hey, <laughs> come on, I thought there was more love than that. <laughs> no, that's television. Things wrap up and move on and, and you embrace that as you get older and you look forward to the next thing. And, and I look forward to that next thing. <laughs> Spin off! <laughs> I love you for that. I wasn't even thinking that, but of course. Here we go. Let's do it again. One, two, three. Yeah, baby. I would love to do that. I want to see that happen. I think that that could happen quite easily with all of us behind that. Love it. Well, guys, make some noise for Libby. Thank you guys for all your great questions. Is Megan here? Megan. Where's Megan? Megan. Which Megan? Ah, Megan with her mother is. There's a couple of Megan. Oh. Megan and. What's your mum's name, Megan? Maybe she's not here. You here, Megan? Long blonde hair, can sing. Sing like. Uh, Megan. Emmy Lou Harris is saying. She's not here. <gasps> she didn't turn up. She asked if she could. She asked if what's that? Oh, I'll be Megan. Oh, you. <laughs> Megan really what? She burst out in this beautiful song, and I said, "Wow, you should really sing and you know, have the opportunity when we get there because you, you're a superstar voice." And she went, "Oh, can I really? Emmy, why she's not here? She sounds like Emmy Lou Harris, and I'm sure you're going to see this. And her mum's Brooke. So to Megan and Brooke." Choose this song. Oh, Megan, I just worked out the one, Sweet Old World by Emmy Lou Harris. I couldn't think of it on our Zoom. But who knows that song? Isn't that incredible? So let's sing that together. There you go, Megan, on our next Zoom call. All right. Thank you. Give it up for Libby Tanner, everybody. Oh. And fuck the label. There we go.
Give it up for Libby, everybody. She's going to go next door and get ready for those photo ops. If you guys have a Libby Tanner photo op, go ahead over there. Right